even any lambda, you can have such an embedding with V lambda contained in the target model M. So essentially you can have M be, be uh, as much, uh, be as close to V as, uh, as you want in, uh, in terms of agreeing on the Van Neumann hierarchy. You can even have, uh, if kappa is super compact, you can have the target model uh, M closed under lambda sequences. And of course, uh, we, we all know all of these definitions uh, and the moral here is uh, the closer uh, the target model is to be, the stronger the large cardinal that you get. So what I think is interesting here is for the smaller lar large cardinals, we usually think of them uh, as having combinatorial characterizations, but there is a whole theory uh, of elementary embedding characterizations of smaller lar large cardinals, and that's what I want to talk about uh, in this talk. And one of the conclusions that I want to draw, which I hope is correct, is what is the property of the elementary embedding that guarantees uh, that you have a, uh, that you get a stronger lar large cardinal notion in that context, and it will be completely different. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about the larger lar large cardinals and the connection of elementary embeddings there with the existence uh, of filters, because we will then uh, compare and contrast these elementary embeddings with the ones that you get for the smaller lar large cardinals. So I want to review some very simple uh, first, ultra filters because they're, they're, they're intimately connected to the existence uh, of these elementary embeddings, both in the large cardinals, and it will be the same thing in the smaller lar large cardinals case. Okay, so suppose uh, uh, that kappa is a cardinal and you use an ultra filter on kappa, we say that u uh, is alpha complete if it's closed under intersections of size less than alpha. We say that it's normal if it's closed under diagonal intersections of size kappa, and if you forgot what a diagonal intersection is, I have a definition to, to remind you. And we have a complete characterization in this case of when the ultra power of the universe by such an ultra filter is well found. This is uh, an easy theorem. It's well founded if and only if the ultra filter is omega one complete, meaning closed under countable intersection. This is if and only. Okay, let's make some easy observations. First of all, nor uh, normality pretty much implies kappa com completeness. You just need this additional assumption that uh, that the ultra filter has all the tail filters. Okay. So once you have a countably com complete ultra filter, uh, so, so you have a well-founded ultra power, you can collapse it to get a transitive class model. So, so count countably complete ultra filters give you that elementary embeddings J from, from V to M. How do you get critical point kappa? You need the ultra filter to be kappa complete. Then you get uh, that, that kappa is the critical point. Okay, so if you have a kappa com complete ultra filter, you have an elementary embedding J from, from V to M. Conversely, if you have an elementary embedding with critical point kappa, you can use it to generate a normal ultra filter uh, in the usual way. It's going to consist of subsets of kappa, such that kappa is an element uh, of the image of the set. Uh, and we call these, these kinds of generated ultra filters, you are the ultra filter generated by kappa by the elementary embedding. Okay, given such an ultra power, the next thing that we want to do is we want to iterate the ultra power. <laughs> so once we took a single ultra power, we want to do it again and again and again. So what exactly are we going to do? Well, suppose that I have uh, one of these uh, omega one com complete ultra filters on a cardinal kappa. We take the first ultra power, uh, it's well founded. How do we take the second ultra power? So I now want to take the, the ultra power of the target model M1. Well, the obvious thing, thing to do uh, is to take it by, by the image of the ultra filter. Okay, uh, and then I have another ultra power, uh, and I again take, take the image of the ultra filter, uh, and we take the ultra power again. We do this for all the finitely many steps, uh, and once we reach omega, we have a directed system uh, of elementary embeddings, and we can take the direct limit of the system. Uh, and then for the successor stages, we, we always take the, the, the ultra power by, by the image of the ultra filter, and at all the limit stages, we always take the direct limit. So this is what we know. 
if you is closed under countable intersections, then not just the first, then all the iterated ultra powers are going to be well-founded. This is a theorem of God. I want to make two observations about it. First, the successor steps are free. If you have a well-founded mind and it thinks that it has a accountably com complete ultra filter, uh, then the ultra power by, by, by the equivalence that I showed you has to be well-founded. Also, it turns out that all the stages has to make a one, so all the uncountable stages are free as well. We only need to check the direct limits for the countable stages. Okay? All right. So that was all I wanted to say about the larger lar large cardinals. Let's start talking about the large cardinals that I want to focus on, uh, namely the ones below a measurable cardinal. And one of the more famous smaller lar large cardinal uh, is a weakly com compact cardinal. So uh, uh, let me quickly re remind you of the definitions of the large cardinals that I will use in this talk. Now, of the smaller ones, so kappa is weakly compact, uh, if every coloring of pairs of elements of kappa into colors has a homogeneous set of size kappa. And weak compactness is, is an extremely a robust lar large cardinal notion. It has tons of equivalent carry characterizations. For, for instance, a kappa is weakly compact if and only if it's an accessible and, uh, and the tree property holds it, kappa. Uh, it has a carry characterization uh, in terms of compactness for an infinitary logic L kappa cap. We will see that it has a very nice elementary embedding carry characterization shortly. Okay, next cardinal that I want to mention uh, is kappa is an effable if given uh, any sequence a AXE of length kappa, where, where AXE is a subset of XE, we can thread it on a stationary set. Equivalently, uh, ineffability uh, has a combinatorial char characterization that, that looks very much like weak, weak compactness. So give, given a coloring uh, of pairs of elements of kappa into colors, we now have not just, uh, not just a homogeneous set of size kappa, we have a stationary homogeneous set. Rika, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So in your characterization, the second one of weak compact, I mean, the last one of weak compactness, you talk about the theories being of size kappa, but I think you need that the language has, has size kappa because there's these weird cardinals which can happen below the continuum yeah. that have the embedding property uh, and they still work with this theory of size kappa. I think you're right, Joe. I think I there's think an issue right. about, about these. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cardinals below the continuum can have the weak compact embedding property. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and then it gives you I don't remember exactly, but I, I remember there was this issue about whether it was the theory having size kappa or the language having size kappa. I mean, all I remember uh, is that inaccessibility matters, but that right. is... If it's inaccessible, okay, then it's yeah. no problem. So that's why the yeah, cover yeah. symbols so are always below be, the continuum. Yeah, you just have to say that it's inaccessible or something for this argument. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, I just put it on the slide without thinking about it, basically, yes. Okay, so uh, another, uh, another smaller lar large cardinal that's going to occur in this talk uh, uh, are, uh, is the alpha Erdos cardinal, uh, and that's a hierarchy of cardinals. Again, it's a combinatorial definition in terms of coloring, but now we have that uh, if we color all the finite uh, tuples of elements of kappa into colors, we get a homogeneous set of order type. Uh, uh, and then kappa is Ramsey uh, if it's kappa Erdos, meaning that you have a homogeneous set uh, of size kappa, of the size of the card. Okay, I now want to start telling you about elementary embedding characterizations of smaller large cards. And so what are the elementary embeddings going to be on? They can't be on, on, on all of these because then you, you already have a measurable cardinal. So they have to be on, on correspondingly smaller models. These are going to be models of weak set theories of size kappa. Let me tell you exactly what they're going to be. So let's fix a cardinal kappa and give some key definitions. So a, a weak kappa model is a transitive model of Z of C minus of size kappa and height above kappa. Z, Z of C minus uh, is Z of C without the power set. So we have all of Z, Z of C only without the power set XM. In fact, most uh, of the large car cardinals that I will talk about, you, you, you can have models of full Z, Z of C. 
so by but in some cases you have to be careful uh, and it's just easier to work with the cfc minus ones so what is a kappa model it's a weak kappa model that is closed under less than kappa sequences and notice that this is the biggest possible closure that you can ask on such a model because it has size kappa so it would be maximally closed in this case and uh, there's a particular class of weak kappa models that are going to be uh, important in this talk and that are nicest to work with. So I gave them a special name. I will call them simple. If kappa is the largest cardinal in the model. Okay, so uh, one of the motivations for looking at the simple ones is these are exactly uh, elementary. This, this is exactly what elementary substructures are of H kappa plus of size kappa would look like. So uh, H theta is a different way, way of breaking up V, v uh, into a hierarchy uh, as opposed to the V alpha hierarchy. We have this uh, uh, H alpha hierarchy. Uh, and the advantage is that, for instance, uh, if alpha is a regular cardinal, uh, then, then H alpha is a model of Z of C minus. While for the, for the V alphas, they very rarely satisfy any Z, Z of C at all. So uh, it's a nicer hierarchy to work with uh, in some sense. So uh, how do you get uh, so how do you get weak, weak kappa models uh, as elementary substructures of H kappa plus? So any elementary substructure uh, of H kappa plus of size kappa containing kappa will be a simple weak kappa model. This is very easy to see. Uh, NF kappa is inaccessible uh, as you're building the weak kappa model. If you also close under sequences, you will get kappa models that are elementary uh, in H kappa plus. So this is always the motivating example here uh, of why these, these structures are important. Okay, so we need, now we know what the embeddings are going to be on, we need the corresponding notion of an ultra filter so we can start looking at ultra powers. Okay, so let's fix uh, a weak kappa model M. And so, so when I say the power set of kappa uh, of M, uh, this will be all the subsets of kappa that are in M. But typically, power set will fail exactly at kappa, so this won't be an element of M. Usually in my models, the power set will hold up to kappa, but will fail at kappa. Okay, so we say that a collection of subsets uh, of kappa of M is an M ultra filter if it contains the tail sets. This is again this technical con con condition, and uh, the structure M together with the predicate for U satisfies that U is a normal ultra filter on kappa. What does this mean? So first of all, we need to include U uh, as a predicate because in most interesting cases U won't be an element of M. Okay, so what does it mean to say that the structure uh, satisfies that U is a normal ultra filter on kappa? So first of all, uh, it means that U measures all, uh, all the subsets of kappa that are in M. Second of all, it means that it's closed under diagonal intersections, but only for sequences that are coming from M. In fact, in many cases, such a U won't, won't be uh, omega-1 com complete in any sense. Uh, it won't be externally closed even under countable intersections because M is a weak kappa model. It is highly not are non-closed and can be missing a lot of uh, a lot of sequences. It will be kappa complete for sequences in M, again in M. Okay, now one of the things that I will do at the end of this talk is, uh, is we will look much, much more, more carefully uh, at the structure M together with the predicate for you. So what I should say now is we assume ZFC minus I in M, once you add U as a predicate, you shouldn't expect to satisfy any set theory uh, at all. Uh, typically, separation and collection will fail very badly in this structure. We will see examples. Uh, close to the end of the talk, I would say, uh, in the last section. Okay, so let's make some, some relevant definitions. So I want to, for, for this notion of an amateur filter, I want to slightly change the definition of alpha com completeness. I don't want to ask that the intersection is in the ultra filter. I want to ask that it's non -M. And the reason is uh, it's very strong to ask that it's in the ultra filter. So alpha com com completeness uh, is going to be for external sequences to the model. Uh, and therefore, you shouldn't expect if you have an external sequence for the intersection to be in the model and therefore measured by, by the amount. So we, we ask for the reasonable thing, which is that it's non-empty. Uh, and this will, will be good enough uh, if it's omega-1 com complete, for example, to guarantee the well-foundedness of the ultra power. So uh, with this definition, uh, if the um, ultra filter is omega-1 com 
complete, it's the same argument uh, is in the case of the larger ultra filters, you will get that the ultra power is well founded. Which brings me to the second definition. I want to say that the M ultra filter is good if the ultra power is well founded. Well, in the case of the larger ones, remember, we had a complete char characterization. We had that the ultra power is well founded if and only if the ultra filter is omega one complete. In the case of the smaller ones, we don't have a characterization. So we know that one direction holds that omega one completeness still implies well, well foundness, but we will see that the converse fails in a very strong way. Okay. So the next thing to do is once we have a notion of an ultra filter, we, we want to talk about the corresponding elementary embeddings. But first, let me make one more trivial observation. And that is if you have a kappa model, meaning that you're now closed under less than, less, less than kappa sequences, then any M ultra filter for it is truly omega one com complete. So it's always good because of the closure. Okay. So uh, if you have a good uh, M ultra filter, you can collapse the, the ultra power and you get an elementary embedding from, from M to N with critical point cap. And we have the converse that if you have an elementary embedding from, from M to N with critical point cap, uh, you can use it as before to generate a good M ultra filter. Okay, so, so again, uh, we have a complete co correspondence uh, between uh, M ultra filters, good M ultra filters and elementary embeddings. How do we iterate? Okay, so I have a weak kappa model. I, I, I have an M-ultra filter for it. I have, I, I have a well-founded ultra power. How do we iterate the construction? How do we take the next ultra power? And the problem here is, in the previous case, the ultra power was by the image of the ultra filter. We can take the image of the ultra filter because the ultra filter is not an element of the structure. So it's not immediately clear how you would iterate the ultra power con construction with these kinds of ultra filters. And it turns out that in fact, generally you can't. The ultra filter needs to have an additional property which is called weak amenability. So uh, an M ultra filter is weakly amenable if for every set A uh, in M of size in M less than or equal kappa, we have in M the intersection of U with the ultra filter. So weakly here uh, is only because of this less than or equal kappa condition. Uh, in fact, uh, if, M is uh, if M is simple and every set has size, size at most kappa, then, then U is actually amenable uh, in the standard definition of amenability. Once you have weak amenability, you, you can define something analogous to the image uh, of U under J. It's not exactly that because we cannot take it, but in fact, it has all of the same properties. Uh, and you can see in the definition exactly where, where you make use of amenability to make the definition. So the way that you think of weakly amenable ultra filters is somehow being partially internal to M. And the pattern uh, that we will see in this talk is that the more internal the, the M ultra filter U is to M, the stronger the large cardinal notion that you're going to end up getting. Okay, let's talk more about weak amenability because it's an important notion uh, in the theory of elementary embeddings of smaller lar large cardinals. So uh, M is a weak kappa model, U is an M ultra filter. It's, it's an easy observation uh, that U is weakly amenable if and only if the structure M together with the predicate for, for U satisfies sigma zero separation. So weak amenability uh, is equivalent to the structure satisfying a tiny bit of set data. Uh, for, for the next observation, I need a new definition. Let's say that an elementary embedding J from, from M to N with critical point kappa is kappa power set pre preserving if M and N have the same subsets of kappa. So uh, every subset of kappa uh, in M is going to automatically be uh, in N, but N in this situation can end up having more subsets of kappa. So what this is saying is that it doesn't happen. Uh, and it turns out that this is an alternative char characterization of weak amenability, because the following uh, is true. If you have a good weakly amenable ultra filter, then the ultra power embedding will in fact be kappa power set preserving. And notice that if M is simple, what this will mean is M is actually the H kappa plus of M. And we have the converse. If you have a kappa power set preserving embedding, uh, then the ultra filter generated from it 
has to be weakly amenable. So, so these are exactly equivalent. So the interesting thing which, which happens here is that weakly amenable ultra powers, because M and N have the same subset, sub, subsets of kappa, have a lot of re reflection back and forth. And this is going to cause certain interesting things to happen, which I will point out later. Okay, we now have enough machinery that I can give you the first elementary embedding char characterization of a smaller lar large cardinal, and this is going to be of a weakly com compact cardinal. So the following are equivalent for an inaccessible kappa. Kappa is weakly com compact, and here com comes our, our elementary embedding char characterization, uh, and it's a prototypical one. You will see very, very similar ones for all the other. So for every A subset of kappa, we, we have a weak kappa model M, which has A as an element for, for which there is a good M ultrafilter. In fact, uh, you can require uh, that every subset of kappa is contained in a kappa model. Uh, and now I don't say a good M ultrafilter because it's redundant. Uh, every M ultrafilter is good in this situation. In fact, you can ask for a kappa model elementary in H kappa plus, meaning that it reflects a large segment of your universe. In fact, you can get rid of the A because every weak kappa model has a good M ultra filter, if and only if kappa is weakly compact. So what ends up happening uh, is to verify weak, weak compactness, uh, you just need to prove the weak embedding property uh, and you get the strong one immediately. Based on what I showed you on the previous slides, a natural question to ask now is, can we further strengthen to get, uh, to get uh, M ultra filters that we can iterate? Can we get weakly amenable ones? I already hinted that partially internal ultra filters give you stronger uh, large cardinals, so you shouldn't expect this to be the case, and it's not. You cannot strengthen. Let me tell you why. Wait, sorry, Vika, can I ask a question yes. before you move the slide? Uh -huh. Um, if you drop the requirement on kappa being inaccessible, so say kappa is like omega two, but it has some weak compact property like the tree property or something, can you get these equivalents? Uh, I think that you can. Joel, am I right about that? You have an example for omega one, I think. Joel, you, you're, Joel muted. you're muted. Right, I have to remember what's in our paper. We we worked out a bunch of things like the situation that Corey just mentioned. Uh, and I think that uh, a lot of them go through, um, uh, we didn't talk about good ultra filters though. Uh, I don't think, maybe, I can't remember now, but uh, something very like it is true for even yeah. when you don't have an accessibility. Yeah, I think you just talked about elementary embeddings, but they're interchangeable with with ultra filters. Yeah, I, mean, I think uh, that's right. I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So this is why, I mean, you don't need an accessible, you need kappa to the last and kappa is equal to kappa. Okay. But it would never be omega one or omega two in that situation because the embedding property implies it must be a limit. So. Uh, I think it was omega one. No, Maybe you can't. I'm misremembering something. Uh, the, the, the embedding property that we were looking at could never hold at successor cardinals. So it wasn't no, directly maybe, maybe connected with these tree property okay. instances. But can it hold at singular cardinals then? I mean, oh God, let's see. Uh, no, no, it definitely holds and right. uh, it doesn't have to, it, it does not imply an accessibility. That is definitely true. Yeah, it's because that they're not strong limits though. So yeah, they have yeah. to be regular, right? Yeah. So, so they're below the continuum. The continuum is jumping way over. So it's definitely not inaccessible, but they're otherwise regular limits is the kind of examples that, that show up in that weak embedding property okay. when you okay. drop the inaccessibility. Okay. Okay, so next I want to make the following definition. I want to say that an M ultra filter U uh, is alpha iterable if it's weakly amenable, so we can actually uh, iterate the ultra power con construction. It has alpha many well founded iterated ultra powers. Uh, and we'll say that U is fully iterable if it's alpha iterable for every alpha. And now remember, uh, in the large ultra filter case, uh, you don't have a possibility of having alpha many are well-founded iterated ultra powers. You either have uh, that all of them are well-founded or that none of them. It won't be the situation here. Here, here I, you will have the situation that you can have uh, only the first ultra power is well-founded. Only the first three are well-founded. 
Only the first omega plus five are well-founded. All of those can happen. Okay, what does hold the same as before, first of all, uh, is if you can do it for, for all the countable stages, then it just automatically holds for you for all of the remaining ordinals. So really the notion only makes sense up to omega one, after that it's free. And the other thing that you have here is again, omega one completeness guarantees you full iterability, the well foundness of all of the stages, but it is too strong. Okay, let's define a corresponding large cardinal notion in the following way. Let's say that kappa is alpha iterable. Uh, now, and this only makes sense up to omega one, as I said before, if every subset of kappa is contained in the weak kappa model, which has an alpha iterable M ultra filter, meaning you have an M alpha, meaning that you have an M ultra filter, which produces at least alpha many well, well founded iterated ultra powers. Okay, so for, for example, a one iterable only means weakly amenable plus good because it's a one, one well founded uh, ultra power. And so this is like the definition of weak com compactness with the added assumption of weak amenability for the M ultra filter. And this is already very strong. It's a limit of ineffable cardinals. And I guess I didn't show you, let me just go back for, for one second. I didn't mention the hierarchy. So what we had here uh, is weakly compacts are below uh, ineffables, which are below the alpha erdos hierarchy, which are below Ramsey cardinals, which is the top of the alpha erdos hierarchy. Okay, where was I? Okay, mm -hmm. okay so one iterable uh, already sits uh, above ineffable cardinals. In fact, uh, this so uh, the alpha iterable cardinals for, form, a, form a hierarchy. The more iterability you have, the stronger the large card, cardinal notion. So uh, an alpha iterable cardinal is a limit of beta iterables for, for every smaller beta. Uh, as long as alpha is countable, these, these are downwards absolute to, to L, uh, omega one iterable implies zero sharp. And they're very naturally and nicely intertwined with the, with the Erdos hierarchy. So for, for nice enough limit ordinals, meaning uh, in this case, additively in the composable ones, you have that a lambda plus one iterable has a has a lambda erdos below it, and then a lambda erdos uh, is a limit of lambda iterable, so extremely tight, uh, as tight as you would want it to be. Okay, and this shows that you can have every amount of iterability that, that you might want to have. Okay, so we, I can now tell, tell you uh, about the elementary carry, characterization uh, of another classical large, large cardinal, the Ramsey cardinal. And it's a very nice, elegant one. It's due, due to Bill Mitchell. So kappa is Ramsey if and only if every subset of kappa is contained in the weak kappa model, which has a weakly amenable omega-1 complete M ultra filter, the nicest possible ones, basically. And so, and we have that Ramsey cardinals are limits of omega-1 iterable cardinals, meaning that you can have full iterability without omega-1 completeness. Okay, natural question. If you think back to the weak compactness char characterizations, you had many equivalent ones. You started with the weak kappa model, but you could stray it, but you could, but you could uh, make it stronger by, by asking for, for a kappa model or a kappa model uh, elementary in H kappa plus. In fact, uh, you had good, good ultra filters for, for every weak kappa model. Can we do the same in the case of Ramsey card? So this is a question uh, that I asked when I was working on my dissertation and I was very familiar with the weak compactness carry characterization and it seemed natural that the same thing would work in this case, but it does. In fact, uh, if you strengthen your, your assumptions, you automatically get stronger large cardinals. So let's define uh, that kappa is strongly Ramsey. If every subset of kappa can be put uh, into a kappa model with the weakly amount of other ultra filter, uh, it's automatically omega one com com complete because it's a kappa model. Let's say that kappa is super Ramsey uh, if, every ca uh, if every subset of kappa uh, can now be, be put into a kappa model elementary in H kappa plus with the weekly amenable and ultra filter. It turns out uh, that each is a stronger notion than the other. So first of all, uh, they're all below a measurable cardinal, but a super Ramsey is a limit of strongly Ramsey, and a strongly Ramsey is a limit of Ramsey cardinal. And in fact, if you ask for, 
for every Kappa model to have a weekly amenable ML ultra filter, this is just inconsistent. You can't have it. So, so, so the strongest char characterization is simply inconsistent. And the reason is vaguely this, the, the reflection that you have be, between uh, M and its ultra power for the weekly amenable ultra powers because uh, the subsets of Kappa are the same. Okay, in fact, in order to get above a Ramsey cardinal, you don't need to ask for a Kappa model. It suffices to ask for a model and it's just closed under omega sequences. Uh, that, that already pushes you above a Ramsey card. So there are two very natural questions that you can ask in this context uh, that were asked by, by Peter Holly and Philip Schlick. One is, can, can we define a large cardinal hierarchy uh, in between here by, by stratifying by, by closure on the weak capital model? And second is, why are we only looking at elementary sub substructures of H kappa plus? Uh, we can ask for, for elementary sub substructures of, uh, of some large uh, H theta so, so, so that we can re reflect a larger and larger chunks of the universe. So now, as, an answer, as an answer to both of these questions, what they were able to do is define a very nice, very natural hierarchy uh, of large cardinals above a Ramsey cardinal and below a measurable. And that's the next thing that I want to tell you about. But in order to do that, we need to slightly weaken the definition of a weak kappa model even further. So the problem is that you can't have weak kappa models elementary in large H theta. This is just impossible. You will never get transitive. So you have to get rid of transitivity. So uh, an imperfect weak kappa model is going to be uh, an epsilon model of ZFC minus, but instead of tra transitivity, we just ask for kappa plus one to be contained uh, in it. And it turns out that all the techniques that you have around these, these elementary embeddings work perfectly with these models. You never need transitivity. You just need that it's an epsilon. Okay, uh, and an imperfect kappa model is one that is closed on under less than kappa sequences. Uh, and the advantage is now you can ask for, for, for models that are elementary in arbitrarily large H theta. So what is the large card cardinal hierarchy that they define? So let's say that kappa is alpha Ramsey. Alpha is regular uh, between omega one and kappa inclusive. So smallest i is omega one and largest is kappa. If every subset, uh, if given a subset of kappa, you can ask for, for arbitrarily large regular theta such, such that the subset uh, is contained uh, in an imperfect we, we kappa model elementary in H theta. Uh, this model is less than alpha closed, which is uh, what the alpha is, and you get a weakly amenable ultra filter for such a model. So uh, it combines both have, uh, achieving a larger re reflection of the universe plus stratifying on the closure. Okay, and it turns out that it's a very ro robust, lar a large cardinal notion for, for for instance, uh, not only are you able to put every subset of kappa into such a model, you can put every set into such a model. And in fact, uh, you don't need to have models for, for, for every set. It suffices uh, that given a theta, you have a single such, su such model uh, elementary uh, in H theta with a weakly amenable uh, M ultra filter. So, 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 so it has many nice re reformulations that you can work with. Okay, uh, they're all below a measurable cardinal, and but a Kappa Ramsey is a limit of super Ramsey, so so it gets above a super Ramsey. But as long uh, as you have an Alpha Ramsey cardinal where 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 Alpha is smaller than the cardinal, uh, then that, then you're below a strongly Ramsey. But you do get above a Ramsey cardinal. I'll, let me just go two 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 slides ahead, uh, and I'll show you the hierarchy here. So, 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 you, so you have the alpha Ramseys are here as long as alpha I is smaller than the cardinal uh, and then the kappa Ramsey jumps above the super Ramsey. The really interesting thing about this hierarchy is that these, these cardinals have a game the theoretic char characterizations, a, a very natural one, I would say. So, so let me tell you what the games are. Okay. Vika, could I ask a quick question there? Mm -hmm. um, is there any particular reason why it's kappa plus one in the um, 
uh, the definition of, could you go back to the previous slide? Yeah, you want to have, uh, you want Is to it, have all yeah. of kappa in it that makes uh, the arguments run. So it should be transitive at least on that part and that suffices for all the arguments. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so what is the game? So we will fix our regular alpha and theta. Uh, again, alpha as before is going to be be between omega one and kappa, uh, and theta is going to be above kappa. So I will call this uh, this game Ramsey G alpha theta, uh, and it uh, it uh, and it's played by uh, by two players, which which we'll call the challenger and the judge. The challenger uh, is going to play increasingly larger imperfect we. We kappa models elementary are in H theta. That's what the theta is for. So uh, at stage gamma, it will play uh, M gamma. Uh, and then at larger stages, it will extend uh, the moves from the previous stage. Uh, and the judge at each stage uh, needs to respond with an M gamma ultra filter U gamma. So, so uh, what the judge needs to do is always to measure all of the new subsets uh, that are coming in in a coherent way. So the judge also has to extend all of our moves. And we have this uh, requirement that is going to guarantee us at some point a weak commendability, and that is uh, the challenger must include all of the moves of the judge uh, in the next month. Okay, the judge wins if she can continue playing for, for alpha many steps, and otherwise the challenger wins. Let's make a very easy observation. In case where the judge wins, let's union up the moves of the challenger to get uh, a model M, and let's union up to get the moves of the judge uh, to, to get U. So M, because of the construction, is going to be closed under less than alpha sequences, as in the alpha Ramsey embeddings. U is going to be a weakly amenable M ultra filter. So whenever the judge wins, the judge per produces uh, embeddings of the kind characterizing alpha Ramsey cardinals. They should give you some, some connection. Let me give you a slightly alternative version of the game, uh, which I call G, G star. It's played exactly the same way. But now we allow the judge to add some extra sub, subsets of kappa, uh, then we, which she then measures. So this seems to make it easier for the judge. Uh, and the reason that I'm giving uh, this alternative one is it will be important in the last part, part of the talk, uh, which I am almost getting to. Okay, a natural question is why games? Why do you need to do this in a strategic way? Isn't it always possible uh, that given a kappa model M and an M ultra filter U, now if we extend the kappa model to some model uh, M bar, can, can't we always find an extension of the M ultra filter? And the reason is you can't, it's inconsistent. Uh, and this is why you can only do it in a strategic fashion. This is the, and this is the optimum thing that you can do in this situation. Okay, so what is the equivalence? What is the theorem uh, that they get? First of all, the games are extremely nice. Theta doesn't matter. A winning strategy for, for either player is independent of theta. And the characterization is that kappa is alpha Ramsey, if and only if the challenger doesn't have a winning strategy. Uh, in either of the games uh, that I gave you, uh, either G or G star. And because the games are independent uh, of theta, it turns out that the large car cardinal notion, we can eliminate this unboundedly many theta out of the definition. Uh, it suffices to have it up to theta equals two to the kappa plus, and that's what com comes out, uh, and, what, and, and that's what comes out of the proof of these equivalences. And the final thing I want to say is it is a hierarchy. So uh, if you have a beta Ramsey cardinal uh, is a limit of alpha Ramsey's for all the smaller alphas. So, so I, again, I have the hierarchy here. And now I am at the last part of my talk. So all of this stuff is relatively old, everything that I've told you so far. Are the, are the strongly Ramsey, the super Ramsey uh, is my dissertation work. Peter and Philip wrote, wrote the paper, I think, three, three to four years ago. And what I'm about to tell you now is extremely new. This is something that me and Philip Schlicht have, have been working on for, for the past few months. In fact, it's so new that I apologize in advance for anything that I will say uh, that is going to be blatantly false. I actually changed, realized that I had some, something false last, last night and changed it on the slide. Hopefully it's correct now. But if I go fast enough, maybe no one will notice it anyway. Okay, 
so uh, the the idea behind the project is as follows we want to look at the kind of large cardinals that we're going to get by asking that the structure m together with the predicate for you for you satisfies more and more set theory up to z of c minus up to full z of c minus so it, I, it actually turns out that the structures M together with the predicate for, for, for you in case where U is weakly amenable are very interesting and have a lot of interesting properties even without assuming any set there. So the setup for, for, for all the slides is going to be kappa I is inaccessible. M is a simple we, we kappa model. It contains V kappa as an element uh, and U is weakly amenable. Okay, first of all, here's a trivial, extremely nice observation. Uh, the structure MU has a delta one definable global well order. So this is only assuming a weak amenability, meaning sig sigma zero separation, okay? And it's trivial. So, so why does this happen? Well, M is a set in the ultra power N. So I, M is a model of Z of C minus, so it can well order M and I can pull it back using wash uh, if I have U in the language. And notice here, I am not assuming that the ultra power is well founded. It doesn't matter. Now, the only thing that, that matters here uh, is that M is a set in N and it's a model of Z of C minus. Now, if N is ill-founded, uh, the global well-order well may not actually be a well-order, but all I care uh, is that M thinks that it is. This is what's going to be important in the construction. So it's a global well-order from the perspective of the structure. Okay, also the structure has a delta-1 definable truth predicate for, for the first order part. Again, it's trivial. M is a set in N. N has a truth predicate for, for, for it, and you can pull it back easily using wash. Okay, so what about true, truth predicates are in the language together with, with you? Uh, it's the usual for sigma n formulas. You have a sigma n definable truth predicate. And this confused us for some time. It's actually quite subtle. This, this relies heavily on weak amenability. Without weak amenability, you shouldn't expect anything like this to be the case. Now, and the reason that weak amenability plays into this is it's only important to define the truth for the delta zero formulas. After that, you, you just add the finitely many quantifiers. So why do you get truth for delta zero formulas in the structure which, which, which has almost no set there? And the reason is, uh, is to evaluate the truth of a delta zero formula, you, you, you only need a bounded piece of U, one which you have in the model, uh, and then the model has Z of C minus. And that suffices. Okay, uh, let's say more, more about the structure. Now, assuming that it has a little bit more of set theory, the setup is exactly the same. Uh, and let's say that Z, Z of C minus N is Z of C with the separation and collection schemes restricted to sigma N assertions. If the structure satisfies sigma, if, if the structure satisfies Z, Z of C minus with N plus one, then, then it satisfies a very nice, very useful form of reflection. So in this case, every set in the structure M can, can be put into a kappa model M bar, which is sigma N elementary with you and fully elementary without you. This is the reflection that you get. Okay, um, now, now let me sketch the, the, vaguely sketch what the argument is. So we, we're going to use collection to close under existential witnesses for, for sigma n formulas. Uh, it turns out that you need one, one, one more level of collection. Once you, conclude, uh, once you know that you have closure under existential witnesses for sigma n formulas, uh, you can use the well order together with collection I to build lo longer and longer sequences uh, of closed models, and then uh, you can union them, them, them up to get the elementary substructure. So uh, at odd stages, are uh, you close under existential witnesses? Uh, uh, and at even stages, are uh, you close under full elementarity in the model M? 
uh, using the truth predicate, which is very simply defined. Okay, so then, then, then we use the separation to pick out the sequences in union them up uh, into the structure that you want. Uh, and because you did it for kappa many steps, you would get a kappa model from the perspective of M. But M is highly non-closed. Why is this really a kappa model? I'm claiming that it's really a kappa model, not just from, from the perspective of M. And the reason is this is an absolutely trivial observation. Even a highly non-closed M is going to be correct about whether something is a kappa model just because it has V kappa. It's an exercise, absolutely true. So we get actual elementary, even though we started with the V kappa model, we get elementary substructures that are kappa models, which seems to be much, which seems to be a much stronger thing. Okay, and we get a sort of converse here, which is if you have a structure which has this kind of re reflection, then you get Z, Z of C minus N. So it suffices to give you collection. Okay, up until yesterday, I had Z, Z of C N pl plus two here. Philip convinced me yesterday that it's plus one. And I looked at his argument and I think it's correct. If it's wrong, it would just bump it up by one. So I looked at it and decided I should change the slides because it's a better result. Okay, surprisingly, this entire topic, so the, and this is uh, an aside for, for people uh, who have worked in second order set, set theory. It has nothing to, to, to do with the rest of the talk. But uh, there is a connection between these, these structures and together with the predicate for, for you and a certain very interesting second order set there. So uh, let Z, Z, ZFC my, minus U be Z, ZFC minus I in the language with the unary predicate U. And let, KM, uh, and let KM U be the theory Kelly, Kelly Morris in the language with the unary predicate on classes. So the following theories then, then turn out to be uh, equiconsistent. One is uh, having Z, ZFC minus uh, in the extended language with the statements uh, that, that, uh, that U is an M ultra filter uh, and there is a largest car, cardinal kappa and this, cap, uh, and this cardinal kappa is inaccessible. So this, this the theory, which is exactly what is satisfied uh, in all of the models uh, that we have looked at, is equivalent to the theory K, KMU. That would be the assertion uh, that ORD is, is measurable, namely U, U is a normal ultrafilter on the ORD. And this actually motivated how, how we, we came to looking at these lar large cardinals. Okay, so let me tell, tell you about the hierarchy uh, that we get uh, uh, and how we, we ended up think, thinking about it. Uh, this was actually motivated by, uh, by a work of Bavikin and McKenzie who were looking at something entirely different. Okay, so this is the hierarchy. So kappa is weakly and baby measurable and I'm not in love with the names, this, this might change. Uh, these, uh, these are mimicking uh, the names of Bavikin and McKenzie. Anyway, so uh, kappa is weakly and ba baby measurable if every subset of kappa uh, can be put into a weak kappa model, which has a good M ultra filter such that the structure satisfies the FC minus. Okay, weak here is because it's a weak kappa model, okay? So uh, kappa I is and ba baby measurable but without the weak part uh, if we can replace weak kappa model by, by kappa. Kappa is very weakly baby measurable. If you have a structure, uh, if every subset of kappa uh, can be put uh, into a weak kappa model where the structure with, with you has full ZFC minus. But the very part is because the ultra, fill, uh, is because the ultra power might be ill found. So I'm not asking for the well foundedness of the ultra power. I'm just saying that I have a structure with full ZFC minus, okay? Uh, if I get, now, if I get rid of the very, then I have the weakly baby ba measurable notion where, where I do ask for the well-foundedness uh, of the ultra power. Uh, and then kappa is baby measurable uh, if in the definition of weakly, we replace the weak kappa model by a kappa. So uh, the end ba baby measurable cardinals were the ones uh, that were introduced by, by Babikin and McKenzie. 
uh, and they didn't use the definition uh, that we are using. They used the definition uh, with the reflection. So, so this was the definition uh, that they had. So ours uh, is off by, by either one or two, depending on which argument is correct. But it's essentially the same idea. I think it's nicer to look at it uh, in terms of fragments of ZFC minus. Okay, uh, and the, uh, and the order in which I wrote the definitions uh, uh, is going to be the order of the hierarchy. Okay, so why, uh, why were Bavikin and McKenzie looking at this in the first place? Uh, they actually were, uh, weren't interested in Ramsey like, like Cardinals uh, at all or any of these. Uh, what they wanted uh, was to find a natural strengthening of ZFC, which is equiconsistent with the theory NFUM. I know nothing about uh, NFUM, so please don't, don't ask me about it. I copied uh, the result out of their paper. But uh, what ended up happening is the existence of these uh, and ba baby measurable cardinals uh, is intimately tied to this theory. Okay, uh, let me tell you what the hierarchy is. Okay. So first of all, it's surprisingly, our intuition at this point should be, uh, is whenever you have closure, it gives you a stronger, a large cardinal notion. But it turns out that the weakly and measurable, uh, uh, the weakly and ba baby measurable uh, and the NBA baby measurable are actually intertwined. So uh, if you have a weakly N plus two baby measurable cardinal, then it's N baby measurable and in fact the limit. And the reason is simple. Uh, if you have enough re reflection, you get kappa models free. So you get the stronger notion, uh, as I already point, pointed out. Okay, the next intuition that we had was even, even the minimal, even adding minimal collection to the structure, you should end, uh, you should end up with something that's stronger than a one iter. So remember, one, one iterable means that you have a weakly amenable uh, M ultra filter, which, which means that the structure satisfies sigma zero separation. So what happens uh, if to sigma zero separation, are uh, you at sigma zero collection? This is the zero, and uh, this is the weakly zero baby measure. So si sigma zero collection uh, is actually equivalent to sigma one collection. So, so you have a little bit more. And the intuition here was that it should be, that is that this notion should be a limit of one iterables. We almost have it, modulo this annoying assumption, which I am hoping to eventually somehow get rid of. What we currently have is that a weakly zero baby measurable below which the GCH holds uh, is a limit of one iterables. I will tell you where the GCH plays uh, in here in a sec. Okay. So how do you do it? Uh, we want to start with the weekly zero, zero ba baby measurable cardinal uh, and show that, that, that the model itself already think uh, that kappa uh, is one iterable and therefore it will be a limit of one iterable. Okay, so, so, so let's fix the weak kappa model M uh, such that the structure satisfies sig sigma one collection. Uh, and, now, and the GCH com, comes in here as follows. If you have the GCH below kappa, then the ultra power has a, uh, has a well order of M of order type kappa plus, meaning the ordinals of M. So, so, so this well, well order that we have been using in this case is going to be set like, and this reduces the complexity of the assertions by one quantifier. So this is uh, where the, the assumption uh, ends up being used. What, once you have the well order, uh, the set like well, the well order plus sig, sig, sigma one collection, what you do is you just build uh, inside M uh, a smaller model, uh, a smaller we, we kappa model, which is closed under pieces of U and therefore U is weakly amenable. So the way that you do it, it still, uh, it still has a difficulty. And the difficulty is we can use si sigma one collection to build increasing sequences of such closed models. But in order to pick them out so that we can union them, uh, them up, you need sigma one separation and we only have sigma zero separation. So we use another trick to union them up. We use an ill-founded tree trick. 
So having sigma zero separation is very limiting. This is one of the other issues here. Okay, uh, let's continue. So we have, uh, so just, just, just to summarize, uh, we have uh, the, the weekly and the baby measurables uh, and the uh, and the end, the baby measurables are intertwined. Now we have that at least con consistently having even a little bit of collection pushes you above a one interval. Uh, and now we have that having now even a little bit more of separation. So uh, a weekly one ba baby measurable means that I have structure satisfying si sigma one collection plus sigma one separation. So, so slightly more of separation. Uh, now pushes you above the strongest cardinal that I had so 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 far, which is the Kappa Ramsey. Even that tiny bit of collection, I, it's really very sur surprising and remarkable in some sense that this is going going to be the case. Okay, but it's a limit. So what do you know about the cardinal? We know that it's consistently wise stronger than a Kappa Ramsey. What is the cardinal itself? In order to say some. Something more about that, I need again this annoying G, GCH assumption. So I, if I have that the GCH holds, hold, holds below uh, the cardinal, then the cardinal itself is strongly Ramsey. So extremely strong. Uh, and if okay. I have a Vika, mm -hmm. can I ask a question? So mm -hmm. can you explain a little bit about, because that, that GCH assumption, I find it very unusual. I don't know any other arguments that- Me either. And, and so could you say a little bit about how you're using the GCH? Is it in that ill-founded tree argument or no, what? No, no. Okay, so, so the way that I'm using it is if I have the GCH assumption that I have the, the global well, well order that I get from, from the ultra power is set like. Uh. When I then minimize, it reduces the complexity by one quantifier. Because otherwise, when you minimize, you have to say for every M, uh, and that's an extra universal. If it's set like, I don't need to say that. I that's see. where it's okay. being used. And it's extremely annoying, and I'm hoping that one can just somehow get rid of it. We haven't gotten there yet. So you want the initial segments of the relevant well orders to be in the model, and you get that yes. for free under GCH. Yes. So that's how you're using it? Okay. Yes. And since you, you asked about it, uh, one of the things uh, that we tried uh, is forcing a global well, well order with this property, but we don't have enough collection to do it. So it doesn't seem, seem to work. So, so that was one of the strategies. Okay, so okay, so so this is the hierarchy so far. So even a tiny tiny bit of collection already put, pushed us beyond the largest large large cardinal that we encountered before then. So so what about the next one? What if we assume full Z, ZFC minus, uh, but without the well-founded ultra power? So this already sits sits above all. Uh, all of the end ones. Even though the ultra power uh, is ill-founded, uh, you, you're already above uh, all of the end baby measurables. And the reason is because of the reflection, uh, you get actual models with well-founded well ultra powers. Uh, even though the full one may not be well-founded. Well uh, if you have a weekly one, uh, namely one with a well-founded ultra power, it's a limit of the other one. So, so, so so every assumption here increases the strength. And above all of them sits the baby measurable notion. So right, right, right up to now, the baby measurable one is the strongest one that we have. And now, Joel, you have to tell me how much time I have left because I have one more thing that I want to talk about, which might take about five minutes. Well, it's uh, it's only five oh six, and we said ninety minutes, so you have plenty of time. So okay, fantastic. So the next thing uh, that we thought would be sensible to do is try to uh, is try to get different game game versions of these cardinals. So game game versions together uh, with asking that you have Z, ZFC minus in the structure. So uh, essentially, uh, an analog of Kappa Ramses for the baby measurables. So uh, we have three pr pr proposed games. The first two are very nice, and we understand them. Uh, 
Now, and the last one we currently don't understand much of. So the first one, the weak game, the setup is exactly the same uh, as in Alpha Ramsey case. So we have uh, that alpha and theta are regular cardinals, alpha is between omega one and kappa, and theta is above kappa. Uh, the challenger plays the same as before. Uh, imperfect kappa models are uh, m gamma elementary uh, in, uh, in h theta, extending at each step. And now the judge plays the star ver version of the Ramsey game. So the judge is allowed to add subsets of kappa, but then has to measure it. And now, in order for the judge to win, the judge uh, has to ensure that the h kappa plus of the structure, together with u, is a model of zfc minus. So I, it's not enough to just to be able to play for, for alpha many steps extending uh, the ultra filter. You also have to make sure that you get ZFC minus uh, now in the H kappa plus of the structure. The structure is big, right? Because uh, it's elementary uh, in H theta. We only want Z, ZFC minus in that small part. Okay, so uh, it's easy to see that the H kappa plus is just the union uh, of the moves of the judge, and therefore the judge uh, has a lot of control over this. Okay, so, so this was the weak game. Uh, now I want to define the game without the weak part. And it's exactly the same, but now uh, we, we ask the judge to elementarily extend her, her moves as she plays. Uh, and the result of this uh, is that the H kappa plus of the union model is going to be a union of fully elementary substructures. So if you have Z, ZFC minus, that you're a union uh, of sigma n elementary substructures for, for any n, but here, we actually ask for, for more of the reflection. We ask that H kappa plus is a union of elementary substructures. And then we have the strong game, the one that we don't really understand all that much. It asks that the judge are now also play mo uh, models elementary uh, in H theta. Uh, and what's going to end up happening here uh, is now the union model uh, is going to be the union of elementary substructures, not just the H kappa plus. And that seems to be, uh, it just doesn't behave nicely uh, as far as we can see, uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, so, so the reason that you define the games is to define, is to define the corresponding uh, large cardinals. Okay, so to the weak game, uh, the large car cardinal hierarchy that corresponds uh, is that you, you ask that you can put any subset of kappa uh, into an imperfect uh, weak kappa model, uh, elementary and arbitrarily large uh, uh, H theta, which is closed under less than alpha sequences. This is the same exact set setup in the, uh, that is in the alpha Ramsey case, but now you ask that the H kappa plus satisfies the FC minus. So uh, it's exactly an analogous notion. With the stronger game, game the corresponding car cardinals are the alpha game ones. Now, and here you get that the H kappa plus is a union of an elementary chain. Uh, everything else is the same. With the strongest ones, the corresponding one uh, is that you get that the model is a union of an elementary chain, the full model, which is, uh, which is elementary uh, in H theta, not just the H kappa plus. And let me tell you finally what the hierarchy uh, ends up being, and I will, oh, I should say something. Okay, so for the first two, two games, uh, as before, uh, they're independent uh, of theta. So uh, exactly as you would expect. Uh, you get uh, that the larger for, for, for larger big theta, the large cardinal notion is the limit of the smaller ones, uh, as you would expect. So, so, so the games are, uh, the challenger not having a winning strategy is equivalent uh, to the large car cardinal notion. And this is the hierarchy, okay? So, so what you get uh, is we have the Kappa Ramses uh, and then the weekly ba baby measurables on top, uh, the weekly game ones on top, below the baby measurable, the Kappa one jump, jump, jumps above the same way that the Kappa Ramsey jump, jumped above the Super Ramsey. Now, uh, now, and then all of the stronger game, game ones jump, jump above the Kappa weekly. Uh, not the strongly game ones, are uh, the alpha game, game ones. 
we don't understand uh, the strong one. We can't even show that it's stronger uh, than the other one. We can show that it's independent uh, of theta. We can show that and that the larger ones are limits of the smaller ones. And also, at some point, I think it's not really very natural. So I'm not sure at this point whether it's interesting or not. And now I'm done. Well, thank you very much. I don't know how we applaud on, uh, on Zoom, but... Uh, yeah, you probably don't. Oh, you can... There's reactions here, I guess. We can do thumbs up or something, so... Smiley faces! <laughs> so, um... Does anyone have any questions? Please uh, uh, feel free to jump in. We'll try to manage it somehow. Yeah, let me ask uh, the terminology good here. Uh, of course, good is used for all kinds of things in all kinds of areas of mathematics. But in fact, good ultrafilter is already defined by Kiesler back in the 60s. Uh -oh. oh, no. Any chance of avoiding that clash? Okay, so uh, the problem is that I am terrible at coming up with, with terminology. I tend to call everything that I like good. Uh, this is just a lack of imagination on my part. So I am happy for any suggestions for changing this terminology. Okay, I was worried that it was already out there in the literature and too late to oh, do it. It is, it is, it is. But we'll change it anyway, okay. Yes. But I'm willing to, I, that, I also change, change the terminology all the time, which is probably a terrible thing to do. Joel would frown upon it. <laughs> okay, so I'll try and think of something reasonable and maybe send you an email of synonyms yes. for good that, as far as I know, haven't yet been used. Yes, I'll avoid I, normal and regular. <laughs> so what does a good ultrafilter mean for Kiesler? Pardon? What does a good ultrafilter mean in Kiesler's sense? A good ultrafilters, okay, there's a, combinatorial definition, but the, the intent is they're the ultrafilters such that when you take ultra powers by them, you necessarily get saturated models. I see. Okay. So it's very far from intended yeah, to get any well-foundedness. Okay. I see. So you should change it to bad. Then. <laughs> as far as I know, that has not been a good idea. Or it might not be a bad idea. Oh, never mind. <laughs> just before you even try, just you should know that there is also an OK ultra filter <laughs> defined by Ken Conan. <laughs> oh dear. No, but it should be something, it should be a very positive word, like successful ones, maybe a successful ultra filter. Yeah. In a way, it's a shame that one iterable isn't actually synonymous because you also need, I guess, that it's a kappa model or something. And that it's we weakly amenable, I think, maybe. Yeah, right. okay. So, yeah. so we can't yeah. just use one iterable. Exactly. It needs the weak amenability because... How about one half iterable? <laughs> I have a Almost question. Almost one iterable. I have, a, I have a question. So, uh, what do you know about the interaction of these notions with forcing? For example, you have this GCH assumption in one of your arguments, but of course you can force GCH by, you know, Eastern support iterations that most of the large cardinals uh, work quite well with, with the lifting arguments. And so have you looked at these notions with forcing and in particular lifting Eastern support iterations and so on? Okay. So uh, if you drop, now, if you look at the weekly baby measurable with full ZFC minus, I think, we haven't checked the details, but I think that you should be able to do all the usual indestructibility arguments that you can do, say, for, for a weak com compact card. For the N ones, I think you shouldn't, well, Probably with like n equal three or something, you should already be fine. But I would have to think about it. So, so the only thing that we have looked at are are are, are the ones that have full Z, ZFC minus, and it's weird there because if you think about it, once you lift an embedding, how do you preserve ZFC minus? So, so what you would have to show is you lift an embedding uh, and then look uh, at the ultrafilter generated by the lift. 
and then argue that that ultra uh, and then argue that the forcing extension with the ultra filter satisfies Z, ZFC minus. So what I think works is if the structure satisfies Z, ZFC minus, then you can actually define the whole ultra power inside of the structure. And what I think works uh, is you can build the lift inside of the structure in a definable way. And this is going to verify UCFC minus. But this uh, is a work in progress. We're definitely looking at it. I see. Thank you. Are there any other questions? So I, I had a quick question about um, how these characterizations interact with this kind of standard well-founded ultra powers. So if I have two measurables, let's say, and uh, <clears throat> I have a bunch of Ramsey cardinals in between them, um, can you inter, you know, I, maybe I want to apply the first ultra, ultra filter and then uh, apply the second ultra filter later. Can I apply a bunch of, is there any way of applying a bunch of these uh, weaker notions in between and still getting something coherent. Probably not because the sources of the embeddings are all going going to be different. I mean, I, in the other case, all of you. I mean, if I'm understanding your 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 question correctly, so there are all of the embeddings are on V, and then it makes sense. Uh, do we? To, to apply one ultra filter and then the, the, the other one. Here you have very, very different sources of the model. So I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't see it immediately. Okay, cool, thanks. Are there any other questions? Um, Mika, I don't know if this makes sense, um, but does a, sim does a simple weak Kappa model think that there's a Reinhardt cardinal? Why would it? Because you said it's the, it has kappa as the largest cardinal. Yeah. So does it think that that's like Reinhardt cardinal? No, I mean, it would have to be that, uh, that's inconsistent uh, with anything uh, that has choice. And these are models of full choice. Uh, even though they, they don't have power so this largest cardinal is the critical point of the embedding. So it's not like the V kappa of the model has an embedding from it to itself here. And the, the, it's like that cardinal kappa is like a little measurable cardinal, basically. It's the critical point of the embeddings that Vika is yeah. talking about. Yeah, essentially, hence, hence the baby measurable term, terminology, actually. Well, guys, I tried to be polite and to raise my hand, but our animator hasn't oh, noticed I'm... me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Ask my question. <laughs> no, I just wanted to come back to your point, actually, Joel. Uh, I think this interaction with forcing is an interesting thing. And perhaps, Vika, what it might be is that if you are working with these models that are elementary submodels of age, Kappa plus, then you could have, uh, you could be in the situation that when you force, you still get such a model or almost such a model. I think you will get, if the forcing is nice, you will get an elementary sub model of the new age Kappa plus or whatever. Yes, but how are you going to verify? So, so the problem here is verifying Z, ZFC minus. Uh, for the forcing extension of this little model with the new ultra filter that you get from the lifted embedding. But because if it is an elementary sub model of H kappa plus, then it should help, no? But without the ultra filter, though. Uh, the ultra filter doesn't interact with that uh, in any way. This is the problem. The ultra filter is okay. just something. Uh, it's just something that has to do with this little model. The H kappa plus itself doesn't have an ultra filter, right? Because in most cases, uh, the cardinal isn't measurable. It's much weaker. No, I understand that. It is a, an, an M ultra filter for this mm -hmm. model M. Yeah. yeah. So this is the main issue uh, that we were run, running into all the time is this. Uh, we know how to lift these these small embeddings, but the problem is you now have to verify that this new ultra filter that you get from, from the lifted embedding 
uh, satisfies collection with respect to this for forcing extension and you can't use because the forcing language doesn't talk about the ultra filter you can't say oh something uh, now works because i can force it i understand no yeah thanks for elaborating on that so dan isaacson has a question if he um, unmutes yes okay so um i wanted to ask if this the these the results i mean this compendium of results gives some kind of a systematic characterization of the hierarchy below the first measurable is there any sense in which uh, there's something comprehensive about what's going on here so or I think, mm -hmm. yes okay just uh, put it like that so what the way that i look at it uh, is that the hierarchy increases as you ask the small model to know more and more about the the ultra filter and the way that we express are knowing more more and more about it is how how much of set theory do you do you satisfy with the ultra filter at some point the strongest notion that you can have in this sense uh, is to ask the the ultra filter to be the to be an element of the model itself mm -hmm. uh, and that in fact is a notion uh, that peter holly and philip luke i think looked at uh, and they call it be being locally measurable and i didn't have time time to mention uh, it in the stock because uh, my slides were already overflowing but the locally measurable i uh, would be below measurable and above all of the notions here so so there you would say that you have a weak kappa model which actually has the ultra filter uh, as an element it cannot be simple in this case right it has to be uh, it has to have a few more more cardinals above kappa so you mean every subset of kappa is an element of a model in which kappa is measurable? Yes. Basically. A model of ZFC minus in which kappa is measurable, yeah. Okay. So, so this is their, their notion of locally measurable, uh, and, uh, and if I'm correct, it will sit above uh, all of the hierarchies that we have. But, but it's weaker than a measurable. So, I mean, does that suggest that this process there is no end in sight for this process. There will be more and more, indefinitely more theorems of this kind. I think, well, so right now I am at a loss of how to get above the locally measurables, but I am sure that there might be some, some other process that might get, get you above it, although it will interfere with my whole philosophy here, which is including more and more of the algebra. But I don't see it yet. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, unless there's any more questions, uh, maybe yeah. maybe this is a point to repeat uh, an argument that I heard many many years ago, allegedly due to Tony Martin. Ordinals are not well founded because given any large cardinal notion, there's a weaker large cardinal notion. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and this seems to be playing out uh, particularly well at the moment below measurable, yes. Mm. That you seem to be fine finding all of these weaker ones are uh, ill found in between. Well, I guess uh, on that note, let's conclude the seminar. So thank you everyone for coming. It was really a pleasure to see so many uh, uh, friends uh, that I've known over the years uh, show up online here. and in these circumstances. So uh, I'm glad you came to the Oxford Set Theory Seminar. The next meeting will be in two weeks from today. And I'll be speaking about some topics uh, having to do with uh, interpretation of, uh, of set theories and by interpretation and issues like that. Um, and so please come back in two weeks and uh, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you very much. Let's thank Vika again. Uh -huh. Uh, can I, for a second, advertise our CUNY seminar? Yes, please do. Uh, if that's all right. Okay, so uh, it's a little late. Uh, it's on Friday, 7 p.m. UK time, I think, uh, 8 p.m. the rest of Europe. But uh, we have a lot of interesting talks. Uh, and if you want to join, send, send, send me an email uh, and I'll get you the meeting info. We, we have a lot of nice talks coming coming up and also please uh, let me know if you want to give a talk we 
we plan to run it through 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 the summer because uh, no one is going anywhere and we all need some high high quality entertainment. Okay, great. So I'm going to turn off the recording now and... Uh...